Hey everyone, Mr. Happy here, and in this video, we're going to be going over the changes coming to the jobs in Endwalker. Now, the patch notes don't have job changes. Instead, they direct you over to the Final Fantasy XIV job guide site, where it has a list of revisions for every individual skill, what skills are new, traits, all that good stuff. Now, I have glanced over the job guide, and I've determined I'm going to do this all in one video. Uh, there is plenty to say about a variety of jobs, but I'm mostly going to be looking for changes from the media tour. We've already been over a lot of what the job changes are going to be in general, and now we're looking to see what adjustments, what adjustments were made, what feedback was taken in. And having glanced over some of this already, I can tell they definitely heard some of the feedback that was had, and unfortunately, in some cases, I think they heard the wrong feedback. But we'll just was one job, we'll get into that a little bit later. I'm going to start with the tanks. So. One of the main reasons I'm okay with doing this all in one video is because the tank changes, they impact the gameplay from what we learned in the media tour, but at the same time, I don't really feel like I have to go in too in-depth into the tanks, especially not being a tank main myself. For Paladin, one of the big things that's actually not mentioned in the job guide and is instead mentioned in the full patch notes is that upon a full party incapacitation, you know, when it resets you to the start and everybody gets their cooldowns back and everything, Paladin will actually get a full Oath Gauge going into a fight, which means that they have access to Sheltrons right off of the bat, which, who knows, maybe you use those first two instances of your Gauge and cover in Sheltron? I don't know. But that's going to be really, really nice for Paladins. That's not mentioned here, but it definitely was worth mentioning. Um, still seeing Shield Bash in here always cracks me up. Even got a Potency nerf. Uh, that's We knew that from the Meteor Tour. Uh, one of the big things for Paladin is actually the cut of their MP costs. Now, Clemency still costs 2,000 MP. It still has a relatively similar effect, as you can see from the revision hover over. It is slightly weaker than Shadowbringers, but again, we knew that already. But Holy Spirit, Holy Circle, and Confiteer all now have an MP cost of 1,000. That is different from the Mediator. What that is probably intended to do is if a Paladin dies and they are trying to recover, they're trying to get back into the fight, 1,000 MP is a much more recoverable amount to try to get them back on that 60, 120 second loop than 2,000 is. Um, it also means that if they die halfway through waiting for their uh, combo to come back, they might actually have a full combo by the time the 60 seconds actually roll around. So that should be a pretty significant change. It also leaves them with spare MP to clemency, which will be good for solos or good for progressions and saving people and stuff like that. It still has its other issues, enough, no mention here of spells not interrupting your combos, which is one of the biggest issues with using clemency is that it cancels your actual combos, but who knows, maybe, maybe that is mentioned here and I just skipped over it somewhere. Uh, so that's a really, really nice change. I've, I've seen a lot of Paladins also talking about Circle of Scorn. Circle of Scorn now has a recast time of 30 seconds as opposed to the 25 seconds, so its interactions with fight or flight are going to be a little bit different. Uh, so the big thing being, of course, that fight or flight has a 25 second duration and a 60 second cooldown. I think they wanted them to line up more naturally. I think they wanted 30, 60, 90, 120, and they thought maybe adjusting the cooldown would work, but I think maybe keeping it at 25 seconds might have been the better idea for that overall, uh, but we'll have to see how the Paladins end up feeling about it and any job changes that come in 0.01 and 0.05. Remember, we are far from done with these job changes. They usually make pretty substantial changes in the first month. Going down to the traits, it, everything seems to be pretty much in order. A lot of the melee mastery traits are very weird. They still seem to be adjusting base potencies and not combo potencies, but maybe the adjustment to the base potency is how they actually adjust the combo potency. Some stuff done on the back end. It just reads weird, so I couldn't help but notice that. Moving on to Warrior. Uh, <laughs> warrior is, is Warrior. <laughs> I don't know. I don't really know what to say, man. Warrior is Warrior is pretty much how I felt about Warrior for... I don't even I don't even know how long. I, listen, I love playing Warrior when I just want to chill tank and just slap something super hard. And I mean, I'm, I still got that here. I mean, even from the media tour, I, I still basically have that all intact here. And so I, I don't really have anything to add to, to this. Anything that I would have said during the media tour, I've already said about Warrior. Uh, and it's still going to be one of the easiest choices if you're picking up tanking for the first time. By the time you're max level, you'll just be slapping stuff. You'll be slapping stuff every minute instead of every 90 seconds at this point. Uh, going down to Dark Knight, now there's a couple of 
interesting things here. One of the most noticeable ones is the change to Flood and Edge of Darkness. Now, currently, they have a two-second recast time. However, in Endwalker, it is going to have a one-second recast time. What that means is they're essentially double weavable in that you can incorporate them into the combo. Now, I've seen some people looking at Blood Weapon and saying that its interaction with that is somehow different, but that doesn't make sense because they're still not spells or weapon skills. So maybe it just means it's a little bit cleaner because they're not two seconds. Maybe it makes it easier to double weave during Blood Weapon windows, and that is maybe to be the intended effect of it, but... Either way, Blood Weapon, still that 10 second duration, not getting charges like a lot of people have been asking for. And I went over that in my interview with Yoshida after the uh, Media Tour itself. Another couple of changes, and this one's kind of weird. Abyssal Drain and Carbon Spit are now sharing a cooldown. Quite frankly, I, I don't... Why? I, I, I guess they... Okay. I don't know. Abyssal Drain is already, I feel like, kind of undone itself over the years compared to what it used to be. And I don't know why they would do that. So maybe that doesn't survive past the first month, in my opinion. Uh, and then there was one other thing. Uh, Salt and Darkness now has fall-off damage from the Mediator. And the Mediator is just 500 AoE, no fall-off. Now it has fall-off damage. Uh, I'm not really all too concerned about that. We really need to get into the game and see how these jobs interact with the content versus just uh, going too crazy looking at it in the way that it is now. So... Dark Knight, not too much else to say about that. Gunbreaker, I'm not 100% sure. I, I, every time I go over Gunbreaker, all I think is just swing, 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 kill, kill, kill. And my brain just, like, switches off. Because I just see all the text grants ready to this, ready to that. Combo action with this, gnashing, fang, that. And it's, uh, it is it is what it is. And uh, it's kind of like with Warrior. It's like, it kind, it kind of just has remained as is. It still has the 1200 potency on double down it still has hyper velocity it's still going to be insanely busy and tanks with bad memory when it comes to using defensives are likely to still absolutely struggle with this their no mercy window is just not long enough apparently according to gunbreakers for all of the tools that they have now that they want to deal damage with and uh but if you're a fan of that fast-paced craziness probably still going to be a fan of it you might just want a, a change here or there to kind of smooth out the experience pretty much the whole way now, moving on to healers, again, th th another reason I didn't do separate videos for this all the way across the board is because while there are some pretty important changes to the healers, much like with the tanks, I didn't really think they were worth an entire video. I mean, looking down the line at White Mage, I immediately went to Liturgy of the Bell and noticed this, uh, basically that it really wasn't any different. It says taking damage will expend one Liturgy of Bell cell. Yeah, and it still is only half the potency here. This, I think, gets changed before 6.05. Because there are a lot of technical issues with this skill, unless it is more, unless there's more content that really triggers it. And even then, I still think it could be designed to be a good bit better. It also has a three minute cooldown, which is ridiculous, in my opinion. I don't see any reason, excuse me, why this should have a three minute cooldown. Um, so I think White Mage, probably the healer I'm least impressed with. This was true in the Media Tour as well. And nothing that I've seen here substantially changes my opinion on that. Still really safe, still really good to play. Obviously, Misery is a great thing, and they'll still be Glare Mages for the most part. Any of the strength they had before, they'll still have. But man, just I'm just less excited about them. But honestly, the thing I was most excited about from the Media Tour was Presence of Mind being two minutes, and that was kind of undone by thin air. Now no longer being a 10-second duration, instead just being good for two casts. Yeah. Gives you a bit more control over it. Maybe using it on reses instead just to preserve MP when you're trying to progress raids and people are dying and stuff. But yeah, even still, um, I don't know. I'm not super excited. Scholar also, nothing too substantial here compared to what we saw at the Media Tour. Um, one thing, I still don't know why Aos and Selene are not instant. Uh, I understand they reduced the cast time on it. but uh. And yeah, all the healer cast times are a thing, but those, those were a thing at the Media Tour too. I, again, I, I'm not going to get too overly excited about those once again art of war still it looks like it still will be really really good on two targets assuming you have the mp to sustain it um their mp is still a little bit of concern since they lost the mp on energy drain but they just stacked 20 percent all onto ether flow 
Um, even with Lucid Dreaming, that may come a little bit tough. And it's a little bit weird of a change when we look at Sage, which got a change to their MP generation. One of the nicest things about Scholar, Summon Seraph and Constellation are one button. Uh, this is something that should have happened ages ago. In fact, from the Mediator, it was a piece of feedback that was given, and it looks like they listened to that. So you know what? That's a nice thing to actually have here, but compared to the other Mediator values, the other Mediator cooldowns, uh, the shields are still looking crazy strong after you get to the high enough levels. You know, they still have expedient protraction. All of this stuff still seems to be working identically. And uh, again, I think expedient's going to be a lot stronger than I think people are giving it credit for. They're focused on the meme but not focused on the strengths of it. So Scholar, I know people have been memeing on Scholar, but realistically, Scholar's probably going to be pretty strong. <laughs> it's probably going to be pretty, pretty strong. So I, I, I've, if you were a Scholar main and you liked it before, you'll probably still like it. But if you had issues with it before, I'm still on the fence about whether the fairy was adjusted or fixed at all. It just didn't seem like it on the media tour to me, but other people claim to have had different experiences. So that's that's about all I can uh, all I can give to that one. Uh, moving on to Astro. So Astro, I had a few issues with in the media tour, even though I really overall like it. Uh, still have concerns about the way they're changing the cards. Um, not the cards themselves, but Astrodyne is just kind of a weird skill. It's a very selfish skill for the Astro, and it's a lot of stress to put on the Astro for something that only affects themselves, but their party contributions are still going to be um, as strong as ever and, uh, and much easier to access thanks to the div changes. Those are also present from the media tour. The change I've seen most people talking about, and I think the change that's most worth talking about, is Earthly Star's area radius being changed from 8 to 20. Star is big. Star is very big. So you're going to be getting a, a, a nice safety net when it comes to the area of the explosion it's now it went from being a solar system to a galaxy let me just let me just put it that way um minor arcana still being a minute the card still being roughly the same you know that's not as exciting for me as i think it could have been i still think neutral sect is utterly ridiculous and the fact that they have something like this and what white mage needs like temperance to give something that can compete with neutral sect in my opinion because i understand neutral sect is it is really like an Astro thing, but the fact that they have this and they're now in the same category as white, I don't know. White Mage's raw healing potencies, I, I just, you just don't need to heal enough to, to the times when you do, I don't know. Maybe, maybe, maybe I'm misinterpreting it again, not a healer main, but I just see neutral sect and I, then I look at White Mage and I look at Lily Bell and I go, you guys just can't even compare these two, can you? Not to mention... I really like Exaltation. I like it a little more than Aqua Veil. And Macrocosmos, oh my goodness. At the very least, the 200 flat potency is nice. But man, being able to just heal for 50% of the damage taken for that duration, I said it before, I'll say it again. I think Macro and Microcosmos are stupid good. And it's just between that and Star and Neutral, I, I'm way more excited about Astro on the pure healer front. I, I don't think I'm going to be the only one who feels that way <laughs> as far as I'm concerned. Uh, and then, yeah, otherwise, these changes are largely the same. The two stacks intersection, the healing potency buffs. It's, yeah, I'm sorry. White Mage, I think, needs more help. That's all. Now, for Sage, there were a few important changes from it before. The first one I really noticed was actually in a couple of MP costs. Uh, so, your crazy diagnosis is actually, it costs less MP now, which was strange. I had, I had issues running out of MP. Like, I couldn't do it on the media tour build. And I thought the MP values looked kind of reasonable there, but they had access to so much that I didn't feel like an MP nerf was necessary on that. And that's not all they did either. That's far from all they did. So Terria got nerfed though. This used to be double the healing potency on Cardian in the media tour. Now it's only 50%. I'm not really sure the reason on that. But the big thing is Adder's Gall, A, you start fights when you, when you just like with the Oath Gauge on Paladin, when you, when you get incapacitated or you at, enter an instance, you have max adder's goal right off the bat, which is crazy. And that this is 7% of the MP now instead of 5%. And again, I'm still not seeing why they need this extra MP budget. Uh, it makes me a little bit more concerned about the, about the MP budgeting of Scholar, and they may need to readdress that at some point, because I just, I didn't think it was possible to run out of MP without rezzing on this job as it was. And I was spamming AOE heals deliberately in the media tour to try to see what it was like. So, 
I don't know. And Caracole is still absolutely ridiculous. Um, that's strong as heck. Uh, Zoe, this is, this is uh, you know, it's a pretty significant nerf considering what it was before the, the healing magic potency buff. In fact, let me pull up the old Zoe here for my own reference to, just to make sure I'm not misremembering this itself. Uh, yeah, it used to double the potency and now it's 50%, but... That's on a healing sp again. Anything that uh, that is a change in the regards to the healing is not something that I'm that concerned about. Especially in one cast every ninety seconds, bro. That's practically how much you heal in a whole fight. Sometimes is once every ninety seconds. So it's like, do I really need that to be double compared to everything else? So yeah, I, I guess there's probably potency changes here and other places as well. Uh, Physis 2, yeah, Physis 2 took a pretty significant hit to its potency. I can see right here, it almost got, it got slashed but to by like 40% down. And there's other potency changes here to their healing. So maybe they just determined that the, for their strengths, for the amount of consistent healing they could guarantee, that they needed to bring down some of the other healing. But Taracole got a 100 potency buff right here at the same time. So like there's, there's a little bit of a shift in power more so it seems. Uh, than anything else when it comes to Sage. And then looking at Haima and Panheima. Haima is indeed stronger than Panheima is, uh, which it seemed like it, it had to be because I was I thought it was weird that Haima and the AOE one had the same potencies in the Mediator. So I figured that was probably a mistake. And it seems that, that my suspicions were indeed met with, uh, with agreements. Rizamata, Hollows, like, yeah, I mean... They're, these are going to be impactful changes, but it's uh, Hollows is the same potency, so I guess not even. And then there's Panhound. And then they, I think these are both stronger than the Mediator versions. Yeah, they're both still even stronger than that. The difference being that now the remaining cure potency is cut in half, which in the Mediator it wasn't cut in half. So I suppose there's that, but their DPS potencies are the same. Um, the one remaining important change, I'd say it comes in Numa. Numa no longer reduces damage taken by 10%. I'm not going to lie, I thought it was ridiculous that it did before because it already has so many effects and they have so many other things in their kit. So I'm not going to really knock it that much. It also got a massive cure potency. It literally got like another 30%, 33% of its cure potency added on. So, you know, whatever. I guess that's that's a thing that's, uh, you know, it's fine. So, I don't know. I think Sage's still looking dope. I think re people really need to stop sleeping on Scholar, though. That's That's the big thing. Now we move on to the one that could have been its own video. Melee. I'll start with an easy one, Reaper. Um, Reaper has not changed all that much. In fact, there's only one significant change I think I even saw, and I need to reconfirm that that was even a significant change, and that I have to go to... Yes, okay. Uh, no, that wasn't even a change. It just wasn't even something I considered before. I think Unveiled Gibbet and Unveiled Gallows are actually higher potency now, which makes sense because they're really just the same thing that you were already doing. They just now have names. So they're just like potency buffs that you get, uh, whereas at the... Well, they're the same potency as the Mediator, but at the Mediator, Bloodstock was also that same potency. So th there's... Yeah, I don't know. I guess Reaper is the easy one. They just... They, they kept it almost identical, like down to the potency. Uh, in fact, I think they did. I don't think they changed anything at all. Like even the even the traits, like awkwardly wording the lower level stuff. I don't. I don't think a single thing is different here. I, <laughs> like I really don't. I gotta double check. I'm pretty sure that almost everything is completely identical, other than Bloodstock being lower potency until you upgrade it, and that's it. Because you'll literally never use Bloodstock again after level 70 anyway. Because it replaces, this starts replacing Bloodstock regardless. So, uh, yeah. It's, uh, Reaper, if you were excited before, continue to stay excited. I'm going to go in reverse order. I think I should go in reverse order for this. Um, Samurai. So, one one very grateful change I have for Samurai. I'm going to go all the way down to it. Fuko. So, originally they had added a new button in here. That was another combo off Fuga. Which was stupid. I, I was like, why did they give them another AoE combo button? Like, they really didn't need it. This just upgrades Fuga now. So Fuga upgrades into this. So the first part of your combo is 10 potency stronger on everything. Thank goodness they did not need to give Samurai another button. I thought that was silly. Now, across other things, the other big changes to Sene and Gura. They gave them massive potency hits in exchange for their Kenki cost being lower. Now, that seems to deliberately be to counter some of the theory crafting that was being done about these jobs in their opener, but they did something else to counter that 
as well. And that was almost certainly in the duration of Mekyo. I had a major question at the media tour. Why are some of these skills lasting 30 seconds? And, uh, yeah, they, it seems they don't want those crazy long pre-pull timers that everyone was concerned about. Or at the very least, they heard everyone's concern about it and started forcing changes down our throats so that we wouldn't have to deal with that on more than a job or two. That's a positive, in my opinion, for Samurai, but I have issues with another job on the list. But we'll talk about that in a little bit. The faint update is here. This was missing from the media tour, even though they had told us it was a thing. And other than that, it's looking like if you liked it before. I really liked the way Samurai actually felt in the media tour. I've always been kind of iffy with Samurai. It's never really felt great to me, but it's also never really felt um, bad at the same time. It just never resonated. That's the thing. I mean, it's not a job I've ever resonated with, but I did think that what I what they had going, what the changes they had going were good, as long as that Mechio change was not kept. And it would appear that it wasn't. So Samurai should be all good. Ninja. So Ninja, there was one thing in particular I was looking for, and I don't think they'd made any changes to it if memory um, is actually serving properly. And that was, I went all the way down to... Where is it? Uh, I went all the way down to Bunshin and Phantom uh, Kaimachi. So this all reads exactly the same. The problem is we don't have the, we're not on the server to interact with it. And Phantom Kaimachi, uh, and I cannot pronounce this, Kaimaitachi. I don't know why. My brain skips a syllable. I've been, I've been knocked for it constantly. But I can't do it. It's Phantom to me. It's Phantom skill. Uh, this in the media tour had an issue where it didn't get the Bunshin effect, but required Bunshin to use which made it kind of awkward potency-wise. It just didn't seem to make sense, practically. Uh, and maybe they this reads the same. The potency is the same. So we don't actually know if they fixed it is the problem or if there were any intentions to fix it. But it looks like the Curse Ninja opener is probably staying based on what I'm seeing here. Uh, Forked and Fleeting Raiju still incredibly, incredibly powerful. Bunshin, of course... Uh, going to play a major, major role in how powerful those skills actually are. Uh, yeah, that's that's the thing. Otherwise, none of this stuff is ever... No, it added to Futon. It added to Hutan in the media tour. It just didn't say it in the in the description of the skill. So it, it works. It works entirely identically based on how it reads. So it, it is what it is. I think you'll still be seeing those Cursed Ninja openers where you do Forked and Fleeting and you literally don't Aeolian Edge for like 40 seconds. <laughs> it's so weird good luck good luck ninjas good luck um and then oh hold on apparently their 90 trait might be a little different because it reads the same ah here we go enhanced rides on fort upon x oh <laughs> Oh, uh, that's good. Wait, maximum of three. So you can store them up, but effect of forked ride you ready ends upon the execution of any melee skill. Um, so, wait. That's, wait, that's silly. Because you still can't use anything but forked or fleeting. That just means that if you ride on three times in a row, you can do forked. You, now you... <laughs> So all that means now is that if you did three Rytons in a row, if you did three Rytons in a row, you would just be able to do Fork Fleeting, Fork Fleeting, Fork Fleeting, but you literally cannot use another weapon skill still. I don't... That's a lot of... That's. A, I mean, here's the thing. The Cursed Opener was already using Forked and Fleeting Raiju a total of six times. I don't... I don't think this changes. I don't. I don't think the changes very much. <laughs> oh man. Uh, the the good news is because this is a melee weapon skill. One one change that I said they needed to be able to use throwing daggers during this. A very minor thing, but I said they absolutely needed the ability to use throwing daggers uh, while Fort was ready without canceling it. And because they've clarified this here, that does that does give them a little bit of breathing room, but it's still going to be really, really silly. Uh, good luck, ninjas. I actually think ninja is going to be a lot of fun, but that the opener is going to be a little weird. Um, Dragoon, I mean, a Dragoon's one of the hardest ones to look at because 
they had to shift a lot of power out of their weapon skills and into things like jump or like keeping their high jump potency the same or uh, making sure essentially had to take a lot of power out of weapon skills for worm wind thrust because you're going to get so many worm wind thrusts not to mention you have heaven thrust you have chaotic spring the upgrades that you get later and it really really shows that it, it makes it one of the more unfortunate ones to look at because you literally look through the revisions of every single one that's just down 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 and they're down by pretty significant numbers but with the cooldowns now lining up, having the 60s, the 120s, the uh, the guaranteed like powerful OGCD every two combos, you know, getting the combo upgrades, the two stacks of life search, I th I think it's actually still going to be pretty good, um, and I think the flow is going to be a lot better with some of the duration changes, the recast changes, uh, blood and life. I, I'm specifically life because blood's permanent now. Um, life, I think, is going to more naturally line up outside of bosses kind of messing with that. So there still will be a little bit of skill expression. And I think Dragoons are actually going to be in a pretty happy spot overall. So the first changes I looked at when I woke up, I rolled out of bed, I clicked my job guide on my phone, and I looked at Monk, and I read the first skill, and I realized I needed to sit down in my chair before I started reading the rest of it. So... I'm gonna hit the. I'm gonna. I'm gonna go ahead and dive right into this one. So there's a couple of weird things about this. Um, I'm gonna start down here because I couldn't help but notice that in the job guide it still lists boot shine and dragon kick as flank, whereas whereas it has properly removed true strike and twin snakes and their positionals. So one of two things is happening here. Either this is a typo or the skill is a typo. And I'm willing to bet that this is the typo right here. Uh, because I think, it, I, I genuinely think that that is going to be the thing. Because there are too many other context clues to imply as much. They've already told us that they wanted to remove some positionals from the job. We knew two of them were gone. And losing the one on boot shine, the guaranteeing the crit from the rear, they've been trying to move away from those effects for years. And it, I think it just makes more sense that the bottom is a typo and not the skill itself. So, with that in mind, Monk has two positionals now. Not a fan. I don't think Masterful Blitz is enough of an addition to warrant taking away any more than Twin Snakes or True Strike. We have to see if this maintains past maybe two weeks a month, maybe the first patch. The feedback they get from actual Monk players may be significant enough to make it so that they revert a change and adjust their gameplay back to having a somewhat more positional-centric style. I just don't think Blitz is enough to warrant taking away more of their positionals. That being said, in terms of the overall changes that are not related to positionals, I still have a lot of the same things to say. Moving meditation to earlier stacks, to earlier sections is great. Having the buff to Twin Snakes being 15% once you get to the high enough point for Grease Lightning is a very nice change as well. You still have positionals on Demolish and Snap Punch, so you will still have to do some of that. Thunderclap is a great change. Bringing back Howling Fist and Steel Peak for the low levels is... All of that stuff is fantastic. And the big change, Perfect Balance now lasts 20 seconds. This lasted 30 seconds in the Media Tour and was leading to a very particular opener in order to get your strongest skill out during 120 seconds. Now, this has a positive and a negative change. The positive change is that there's no more super long cooldowns for Monk. If you try to do like an early Perfect Balance as part of your opener, it's actually going to screw with your timings for the entire fight. So you will be going into your opener it seems, at the very least on the surface, doing two perfect balances and then using your Rising Phoenix with the 60-second cooldowns as opposed to the 120. That comes with a negative. I think it's wrong to have Monk's strongest skill, their single highest potency skill, literally not line up with 120 seconds by default. So, And also it can only be executed while in combat, so they eliminated that anyway. Regardless, no matter what, you won't be doing a pre-pull perfect balance. So it's, I am not a fan of their absolute strongest skill now being restricted to only being accessible during 60 seconds unless a fight forces some sort of downtime that allows you to reorient it. It just doesn't make sense to me. It definitely takes a bit of fun away from the job during its, during its 120 second burst window. But I mean, maybe they figure that the amount of, you know, dragon kicks and and boot shines you'll be going for, which will still be a significant amount, is going to somehow outweigh that and, and be it. It's, 
I think Monk's going to need adjustments. I don't think they need major adjustments, but I think they need adjustments of some capacity uh, going into 6.05 or 6.1, if not for performance sake, for fun sake. I, I think they've missed the mark. I think they've hit the mark with Masterful Blitz and they've missed the mark on a number of other things. Even Riddle of Earth no longer works as a second True North, which is goes to show you again, excuse me, uh, goes to show you again that Bootshine and uh, Dragon Kick very likely lost their potencies, and that's very much deliberate, and the bottom part is more of a typo. Um, other than that, again, there's some silly things here. I think Anotman's going to be more useful now than people think it will be. I think the ability to not need to refresh Twin Snakes coming out of a downtime is going to be a lot more valuable when you're going directly into perfect balances and burst windows. So I actually think Anotman unintentionally, I almost feel like, is a little bit more useful. Um, Riddle of Wind's still a little weird, but an auto attack, is that's significant. It's just still weird that it sits on that 90-second cooldown. I still don't 100% agree with that. So, um, And also, by the way, not Rising Phoenix. Phantom Rush, I meant, will never line up with your your two minutes unless a fight demands it. So, uh, yeah, I, I just have a couple issues. However, one very good thing is the changes to meditation do seem to be very much uh, the same. The big thing is they fix the language on Brotherhood and the meditation traits. In that um, when you are in Brotherhood, your chakras will always open when you use a weapon skill. Not when your allies do, but essentially being guaranteed chakras during that time will improve the uptime of it. But I think that I think they're going to have to revisit Monk. I, I think that's this may be the one job where they kind of miss the mark in too many different ways. Now, moving on to physical range, I actually don't have much to say about this. The changes that they made to Dancer from the Media Tour are still pretty much intact here. And while I, there were some that I was like 50-50 on, much like most of the jobs, you know, proc rates, I think overall they, they hit the nail on the head. I love the Dancer throughout all of Shadowbringers. I still think they've done a great job with this going into Endwalker and the changes that they have here. Uh, don't really adjust that in any in any capacity improv is the only thing i'm still kind of weird about i'm not super big fan of this like whole shield thing and i hope that we don't see any stupid stupid ideas with this other than just using it as it's intended maybe at zero stacks or something but this job they fixed all my major issues with it that i had from shadowbringers and those were in my opinion not even that bad of an issue as compared to what other jobs had so they lowered its rng they gave it a more consistent burst window they allow you to play around the procs a little bit more smoothly Big win, big win for Dancer across the board. Machinist also, not much has really changed from the media tour here. Um, even the potencies are all the same. Uh, and I think, once again, Machinist is going to be in a really solid spot, assuming, of course, that you don't have issues with the ping that the job is going to be demanding of you, which was the one thing they didn't fix. And again, unfortunately, I have very good ping. So I, I, I asked the question. I made sure they were aware that this was a frequent discussion. But, you know, I'm still going to play it just fine. <laughs> it's it's going to be good. Now, Bard, I've been, since Mediator, I've gotten more and more excited about Bard. And they've actually made some things that I'm a little less interested in. But they've also changed some things that I think are going to be making Bards generally happier in terms of their overall gameplay flow. First of all, I think they heard me with the two charge thing and went Bloodletter and Reign of Death up to three charges, uh, which... Okay, all right, I'm 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 in on that. I'm definitely in on three charges on Bloodletter and Reign of Death. Now, that didn't come for free, I would like to point out, because now Ballad specifically, whenever it procs, reduces the recast time of Bloodletter and Reign of Death by 7.5%. Now, that didn't come without a cost because all their repertoire chances went up to 80%, up from 40%. This drastically reduces the RNG on Apex Arrow and thus means you'll be interacting with Apex and Blast Arrow much more frequently without actually doing, uh, without actually doing, uh, what's it called? Uh, without, without overcapping either. So they shouldn't overcap as much anymore. They shouldn't, uh, they, they're going to have the 80%. They're going to be way more consistent then oh yeah well it's not based on it's not based on the dots anymore so it's just what it should mean is it's i'll take the 80 percent on the not dots versus um that wait actually no hold on now this is kind of weird 80 percent chance to grant repertoire is this just on every weapon skill now yeah hold on wait a minute repertoire effect reduces the recast time both 
Because it can't just be, wait, is it just on all weapon skills now? Yeah, it just says 80%. It doesn't say anything else. Every three seconds. Oh, does it say, it might say it in the trait below. I just realized as I'm reading it, I got really excited the first time I read it. And then let me go down here real quick and see if it makes any mention of it. Cause it just doesn't say, it doesn't say on server tick. So it's just kind of, that's kind of weird. The language isn't super good on this one. So, uh, all right. Well, I guess now you just have a higher chance, but you get them. Okay. I mean, actually, even still, now you just get them. You're very likely to just get them consistently every few seconds. So uh, I actually think that that's still probably going to work out to feel, A, much less annoying to do, and B, uh, and B, it's still going to add to a lot of consistency for the job itself. It's just weird. This The language here kind of... Uh, should be a little bit more clear, but I guess there's already so much text on this thing that it's actually going to be a bit of a problem. Now, there's a couple of other things. Barrage, improving the potency of Shadow Bite, weird, but it makes it usable in AoEs, so okay. I'm okay with that. The big one. Battle voice, you can hear your own voice now. <laughs> you can hear your own voice now. <laughs> Oh, man. In fact, you can hear your own voice across the board because you get your own ballad buff as well. Oh, man. It's weird to see how they just seem like they weren't going to go down that road. But bards can hear their own voices now on ballad, on battle voice. They're getting their own buffs. And that's uh, honestly, I didn't think it was going to make that change. But they've decided to add consistency, make sure they get their own buffs. And uh, yeah, I, I don't think anyone's really going to be complaining about any of this stuff. A lot more consistency, a lot more feel good skills. And then Radiant Finale, they took away kind of what was interesting about it as a 90 second cooldown and decided to just make it something that you'll, it's, it's essentially a two minute while being 10 seconds less than a two minute cooldown. Uh, and that all the codas scale linearly, you can use them on three. So now it only punishes you for making mistakes. And honestly, it also punishes downtime windows kind of, because if you can ever, if there's ever a downtime window that throws your rotation off, uh, co Radiant Finale is going to feel it a little bit more now. Uh, so that's that has its ups and downs but so did the 90 second version sidewinders not based on the dots and this is so here's a this is a really weird thing because they essentially took away all of the jobs dot interactions when it was the one remaining dot job now it just has them and it maintains them but they don't really have much of an interaction with the job and i think that is kind of an identity mistake we've already done jobs that have moved away from dots and i think i understand that when they didn't want dots to be kind of like the gimmicks of the jobs, like they wanted to move away from that on some of them and they started removing them around the board. But this one doesn't make sense to me. This one, um, this one should really just not be the way that it is, I guess. I, I, I don't know. It's just some of the changes here are a little weird. Um, also, Shadow Bite isn't tied with Sidewinder anymore but you look at that you just need shadow bite ready which i think is what you got from barrage see there they actually made like some pretty they did say some jobs got some like really significant changes so it seems like the dots just want to interact with straight shot now i don't know I, I think they didn't need to take away all of the dot interactions that they had except for the straight shot ones um i feel like they probably could have kept a lot of that stuff in uh it's aoe refulgent yeah Okay, yeah, see, they just, they, they did make a lot of changes here, and not all of them are apparent, because I read through this, and I didn't even see some of these things. Here it is, yeah, Quick Knock gives you Shadow Bite ready. There you go. And then, obviously, Quick Knock becomes Laden's Bite later on. Yep, oh, there it is. Yeah, so it's just, yeah, it's just an AOE, like, straight shot ready kind of thing. Okay, well, I mean, that's a nice degree of consistency to that. Man, Bard is stacked. <laughs> The more I read, the more I realize the things that I missed or didn't understand when I read it when I woke up at like 5.30 in the morning. This job is stacked, man. It's, it's, I think this is going to be this is gonna be the hotness as far as I'm concerned when it comes to range physical. And I, it's after an expansion of me just pooping on the job because I didn't like it. But I still stand by the dots, uh, the kind of removal of the dot interactions other than one specific thing. I do hope they kind of revisit the idea of a dot job in the future one that is very integrated with its dots it's not something to be afraid of it's an identity you can work around that you can do something with that and you can make it fun and interesting but we'll have to wait and see what they'll get later on now i actually haven't looked at the casters ahead of time i didn't have enough time to look at the casters ahead of time 
Uh, so a quick skim through. I'm not going to be paying too much attention to potencies. They have the mana. I do remember people saying that Red Mage didn't seem to have changed quite a bit when I was reading through some people's opinions. Uh, and that was that was as a good thing um, for Red Mage because I, I am I don't know if I still have to be concerned about Red Mage's opener. Uh, Increases the potency of impact. Ensures trigger Vertha. Gives it two charges. It's 55 seconds. Ensures the next... Oh! Oh! That is the... Oh, okay. These are... Oh! <laughs> That's... Okay. All right. That's... <laughs> oh, man. All right. Mobility. All right. Uh, all right. Uh, that's uh, okay. I, I like it. I like it. Uh, this uh, this looks like it's the same as the Mediator. Uh, do they change magnification at all? Increases it? Nope. Yeah, that's still okay. Yeah, so um, they got some more mobility in there. And Bolden doesn't decay. And it's still, and it affects everybody now. So they took out all the little tiny bits of funkiness. That red mage had remaining, and they also have magic barriers still, so they're going to be OP. So <laughs> the fact that this exists still to me is crazy. So and the fact that now they don't have the fall off and they have the mobility, uh, wow. Okay. Um, <laughs> yeah, mediator red mage was already looking good. Uh, considering some of the level changes to stuff and some of the changes they were making overall. Now it looks a lot better. <laughs> oh my goodness. Summoner. All right. Uh, Summoner already looked good from the media tour. What else do we got here? What what really, really changed from the media tour? Oh, cool physic. I'm a big fan. Uh, Eat the Charge still here. Summon Ruby still here. Uh, you know, maybe there's some potency adjustments here or there. You got that uh, fire attunement. Ruby. Oh, there is actually one or two big things I want to check for when it comes to Summoner. Uh, Topaz Ruined. I, I got to, you know what? I played it at 90. I got to read this in reverse because I can't, if I read it from the earlier levels, it's actually going to confuse me more. Holy mo. <laughs> it's so long. <laughs> to be fair, we knew it was going to be, uh, it was going to be a long one, but it's, it's, it's so many notes. <laughs> I hope you have a, a degree, a PhD, to get through all of this. Okay, these are still all 700, 700, 700. Okay, that's fine. Slipstream, that is the same potency. It's still the really long cast time. I think this lasts longer than it did in the media tour. I, I don't think it was 15, sec uh, 15 seconds, but it's also... Uh, listen, my brain just broke, so I need to... My brain needs to catch up with everything I just read. Yeah, Slipstream, no, Slipstream was was uh, 12 seconds in the media tour. Yeah, so that's a little bit different. Mountain Buster still being an OGC. Crimson Strike, 430. Crimson Cyclone, still 430 with the fall-off damage. Okay, that's still all relatively the same. Um, Emerald Catat, that's, these are the lower level versions of, okay. So, uh, those, yeah, uh, that's, those seem, still seem like they've stayed uh, largely the same from what the media tour had. What? Wait. Really? <laughs> Wait. Hold on. Wait a minute. <laughs> Is re Did they change Rekindle? No? Okay, Rekindle's kind of weird, but I'm still going to use it. Um, Hold on. There's there's another skill I have to look at now, because that's... that's Wait, hold on. Where is... Stop showing me the disasters. I don't need to know about the AoEs. There's, nobody cares about the AoEs. We just care about saying... Okay. Uh, I'm definitely playing Summoner the first raid tier. Okay. That's... Uh, I don't care if you only get one because here's the thing. That's going to feel so good to use. They essentially made it... So you use it once per one of your Bahamuts or Phoenixes and it hits way harder... And so the trade-off is instead of two for half, you get one at that. And you know what? My, I don't care about the number squish. My endorphins are already going crazy from just seeing a bigger number. And I'm going to need those endorphins after the stat squish. So I will tr take the trade off of two for one, but it's way, way stronger. Because I'm going to be pogging hard whenever I do that. 
Um, other than that, a lot of these potencies look somewhat identical. And that's fine. I think they tried to shift a lot of the power onto GCDs. And the few times there are OGCDs, I guess I can't say that anymore after Ockmorn. So that point kind of doesn't stand in any capacity as far as I'm concerned. Um, but yeah, they have, uh, this, these are just, it's a mishmash of words and changes that still just essentially boil it down to kind of how it was in the media tour with just a few changes throughout. Uh, and I think it's going to be a lot of fun. <laughs> I think it's going to be a lot of fun. Oh, boy. I'm so excited. I can't wait to play the Summoner. It's going to be a good time. Okay. Anyway, with that, uh, Black Mage. Now, this is, again, another job I was excited for. And I uh, don't know what to expect. So, the big thing we were looking for is some potency changes on Fire 2. And some uh, changes. And to see where the potencies for... Uh, Paradox were standing versus Fire 4 after everything. Uh, enhanced Flare. Okay, that's still largely the same. Mana Ward. Uh, mana Font has been updated. It has cooldown brought down. You know, we knew that already. That's really good. Blizzard 3. Freeze. Freeze is now the AoE Blizzard 3 as opposed to being like your AoE filler. Your AoE filler during that time is still Blizzard 2 with Fire 2 meaning. I I'd assume you'll still be doing two Fire 2s. Um, before doing two flares, and that's still what the intention is there. Ethereal manipulation is 10 seconds. Okay, flare. Yeah, this is meant to be. Yeah, so what's the potency? 280. Okay, so it gets a 60 potency buff. I feel like it got only like a 20 potency buff in the media tour or something in that capacity. Something very low. I, I remember people saying that it was kind of awkward how low it was. Um, let me check right here. Yeah, no, it got a 40 potency buff. Now it gets a 60 potency buff. Okay, that should that should help level things out from what it was before. Oh, hello. So they decided to make the change to Ley Lines after weighing it and saying they weren't going to do it. They said, you know what, how about we just uh, make it exactly the same and increase it to two minutes anyway? <laughs> I think they may have realized that ultimately it is a DPS cooldown and that during burst windows that are very, very timed, that they probably should just make it line up with stuff. So uh, that's it seems to be the intent because the, the potencies are all exactly the same. The durations are the same. It just has a longer cooldown now. Uh, so that's okay. That's that's not too surprising. It just means it lines up with burst windows now. Uh, sharp cast, you know, ensures all these guarantee the proc, and you get two charges. Yeah, we knew that. Blizzard four uh, still looks largely the same. Fire four has got that three hundred potency, which it had during the mediate tour. Between the lines looks like it's largely the same. Thunder four looks like it's largely the same. Triple cat, <laughs> really? <laughs> I mean, to be fair, you're still going to use it probably. What Here's the thing. It's a very important trade-off to know whether you're using it once a minute or if you're becoming a machine gun once every two minutes. So um, this is actually... A, uh, th there are decisions to be made for regarding whether or not you would actually save this up to two and try to use it like that. But, uh, oh boy... <laughs> That's yeah, this is this is gonna be actually in crazy flexible for fights. Black Mage was already looking good mobility wise. They were great in Shadowbringers. And this now gives you a little bit more thinking involved into whether or not you want to use it for just crazy bursts or if you want to actually use it for mobility. So most fights probably gonna be using it. Like dungeons and stuff, you'll probably use it for for DPS because hilarious. And then for raid fights, it'll be very contingent on the fight. Okay, that's that actually is really good. That opens up some good gameplay options for them in regards to the use of the skill. Let's you uh, let you play around it a little bit more. Now I do need to check Paradox's potency versus what I have here. So Paradox actually lost ten potency from the uh, Media Tour. Now the big concern with Paradox was that its potency was lower than Fire Four, but in exchange, its cast time was lower than Fire Four's as well. And how that would actually pan out in regards to your initial burst window. With double triple cast in the opener, I'm less inclined to imagine using Paradox because you won't have any fucking cast times for your openers and your reopeners. Um, so its other uses are more important than its burst window uses. You'll be using it every fire phase. You've always been able to use it during your ice phases. It's really good. 
Um, the spell cast immediately when it's in ice, so you have this mobility. So it, it's even crazier for their mobility during ice phase, which can be really, really useful for getting there. So Paradox, in terms of a burst window, I still think its cast time being lower is not going to impact the fact that you want to be crazy spamming Fire 4s. You want to make sure you get a double Xenoglossy in your openers now if you can, thanks to the amplifier plus your normal Xenoglossy stacks. And, uh, but Paradox, every, all the time in between that is going to be incredibly useful during your, it, it essentially slightly empowers your Astral Fire phase, and it improves your mobility in your Ice phase. Everything about it is good, it just has that one tiny interaction. Not to mention Anokin being a passive, as they made the change before, is going to be good. The changes to their traits that we mentioned from the Mediator, with Aspect Master being level 1, Easily one of the most important changes they could have made to the job. And so I have nothing but excitement. Uh, kind of for the caster role overall. Red Mage definitely still le less my speed than everything else. But it seems like they really caught a lot of the feedback that people were making to uh, pretty much everything. There's probably other little changes here that I have missed in favor of my brain melting from what I just saw with all that stuff right there. Um, let's see, only one thunder over time effect for caster can be inflicted, yeah, each tick, uh, full damage over time, no MP cost, okay, oh, this last, oh my word, oh, well, uh, that's, that's a duration on thunder, oh yeah, they, yeah, okay, Yoshi P play tested the hell out of this, all right, so, wow, that's, <laughs> <laughs> oh my lord uh so black mages are probably pretty happy with most of these changes okay this is this is what yeah this was what the two week delay was for it was so they could fine tune black mage uh and uh yes yeah, they've got mad procurations they've got like mad it's long on fire it's long on thunder they've got mobile Yo, so, Raid Team, how do you feel about Black Mage and Prague? How do you feel about that? Because I'm feeling that, and uh, I'm feeling that in Summoner pretty hard right now. We don't need reses. I can move everywhere now. I got 40 second. Who needs a res? I got a 40 second Thunder Prog. So, realistically, the only miss, I think, is Monk. That's the only miss in most of these changes that is, in my opinion, super significant. White Mage less of a miss and more of an oversight, I think. I'm just not excited about it, though, so that's a bit of bias showing. I know people are going to meme on Scholar. People are still going to meme on Dark Knight. I think some of the Dark Knight changes were unnecessary, and I think we'll be seeing Dark Knight adjustments in .01 and .05. I'd be surprised if we don't, um, and same with White Mage, but... I mean, they, I mean, I'm looking at all the other jobs, and I'm going, damn, we got this. We got this hard, okay? So I hope y'all are looking forward to the servers coming up, because I know I am at this point. So with that, I am going to probably shiny hunt for the rest of the day once I get this and State of the Realm on YouTube. So for anyone who's wondering what my plans are, if you made it this far in the YouTube video or you're watching live on Twitch, the plan is to start streaming a couple of hours before the servers go up. The uh, new audio add-on that you can purchase, uh, the immersive audio from Embody, they gave me a couple codes to give away. So I will be giving those away after early access begins. You can apply them, go through the setup process, all that. I don't know when I'll get to do the setup process because I'm going to be focused on playing for the first day at the very least. But they gave me a couple of codes to give away. So I'll be giving those away before the servers actually go live and probably doing some last minute shiny hunting. Once the servers go live, plan is Reaper 70 to 80. I have Twitch front time from 3 to 5 p.m. Or I'm sorry, 3 to 5 a.m. Pacific time. So I figured playing something that's not story spoilery or if I'm able to play at all, we don't know what the state of the servers will be, is probably the better idea to have. After that, I'll be playing through the MSQ. I will not be skipping cutscenes. I will be uploading all of my reactions to YouTube and I'll still be doing dungeon walkthroughs, trial walkthroughs and stuff, and then we'll be making proper guides to those once my playtime dies down a little bit because I'm getting exhausted. So those are what my plans are looking like for Endwalker's release, and I am looking forward to it immensely. Looking forward to it intensifying. Looking forward to Forge Ahead. Anyway, with that, 
I'm going to get back to my Twitch stream. I'm going to get back to what I had planned for today. And I will see all of you, finally, and gentlemen, for Endwalker. So enjoy the, I hope you enjoyed the YouTube video. I'll see you in the next one. Until then.